Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this free fall problem, they tell us that we have a circus act with an acrobat rebounding upward from a trampoline, and at the exact moment, another acrobat drops a ball above him, and they want us to know how long he's in the air before he catches the ball. They give us his initial speed of eight meters per second, and the ball is nine meters above him. So if we quickly draw a picture, we have the acrobat, and he's jumping off the tramp, and then way up above him, we have another acrobat and he drops a ball off of a perch and he's going down. And so this distance they tell us is that he is nine meters above this acrobat down here. So to approach this problem, let's write an equation first for it. So we know that the acrobat is gonna move up some distance. We don't really know how far, so we'll just say it's delta y and we'll say a for the acrobat. And we know that that has to be the exact same distance as this nine meters. And it's going to be plus the delta y for the ball. Now that might seem really weird. Like, what do you mean it's a plus because it's going down? But it's because it's going down in the negative y direction, this will actually really look like this, a positive, a negative value. So however far it falls down, that distance, 9 meters minus it, will be the exact same as how far up the acrobat goes. That took me kind of a few minutes to kind of wrap my brain around. But once you do, it makes sense that all it is is however far he goes up, and nine minus however far the ball down goes down is where they will meet. Okay, so now that we have our equation, we need to figure out what we're gonna put in for the delta y's for both. So let's do them separately. So we'll say the acrobat and the ball. So for the acrobat, we're wanting to use a kinematic equation, and we're going to be using the one that is y final is equal to y initial, plus vi times t plus one half times acceleration times t squared. We can get rid of some of these things first, of course. So for the acrobat, his y initial obviously is gonna be zero. He is starting right out down here. Now everything else is gonna be in there. We have an initial velocity and we have acceleration, which in this case will be gravity. It's a free fall problem, obviously that kind of makes sense. But once he jumps off of the tramp, the only acceleration acting on him is gravity pulling him down. And since we have final minus initial for anything delta, if we were to have moved this over, the y final and delta y for the acrobat, it's the same thing. So we can change that just to fit our equation above as delta y for the acrobat is equal to vi times t plus one half acceleration. And let's change that to gravity so we can plug it straight in. And that will be a negative g times t squared. Okay, so we have our delta y for the acrobat. Now we need to put in our delta y for the ball. This is gonna be the exact same thing. So we have y final minus y initial. Since it's this equation right here, we can move that over, just like we talked about a second ago to give us delta y for the ball, is equal to velocity initial times t plus one half times acceleration, which we'll put in as negative g, just like we spoke about, times t squared. In this one though, since we're dropping the ball, right when this other acrobat releases the ball, it's gonna be hanging in midair. So for that split second, the initial velocity is actually zero. So this can go away as well. So now we have delta y for the ball is equal to one half times gravity times t squared. So now we have our two formulas. So now all that's left is to plug them into here and to plug them into here. Okay, so let's rewrite our equation down here. So we have delta y a is equal to nine meters plus delta y b. And now let's plug in a so we have vi times t plus one half times negative g t 
times t squared is equal to yb, which we said, oh, let's see, we have nine meters plus, now y, delta yb, so we have one half times negative g times t squared. Okay, so now when we look at this equation, there's a lot of similarities to it. So over on this side, we have a one half negative g t squared. Over here, we also have a one half negative g t squared. So since it's the exact same thing on both sides of the equation, that can cancel just to simplify the equation down further. So now we have vi times time is equal to nine meters. Now we want to solve for whatever t is. So let's isolate t by dividing over v initial. So time will be equal to nine meters divided by the initial velocity. So it's kind of crazy if you think about it. We just simplified all of this stuff and all we're doing is we're going to take the distance that the ball was at the top, divide it by the initial velocity, and that gives us the time. That seems so weird, but the math because everything is the same, the simplification gives us the correct answer. So it's a really kind of a cool question that how much we can simplify to give us information. So now when we plug this in, we have nine meters divided by the initial velocity, which was eight. So we have 1.125. So the time, we can round that to 1.1 seconds, which is the final answer for how long the acrobat is in the air until he catches the ball.